All right. What's going on? This is another episode of the Mike Styles Experience. And I had to reach out to somebody who not only inspired me, but also motivated me to do this podcast. And I know I've been going on about bringing people on for a while and people have been telling me to bring other people on. So after about a year, I finally reached out to somebody, um, like I said, who inspired me and this gentleman, his name is Kevin Robinson, who is an entrepreneur podcaster and the podcast, which he has Kevin hates hip hop, but also, um, he's an author as well. And I just wanted to welcome him to the show and, um, starting out, you know, what's, what's been going on lately? I guess what, what are some of the things besides the book that you've been working on that you can kind of share with everybody? Okay. Um, thanks for the intro. Now, look, I just want to say this cause I know you brand new to YouTube. Yeah. Make sure if you're watching this on YouTube right now, hit that subscribe button, hit the comment and the like It helps with the metrics. You know what I'm saying? So y'all make sure y'all do that, man. And uh, if you're listening to this on, on uh, iTunes, make sure you five star review this and uh, comment on it, man. It helps with the metrics, you know what I'm saying? So, but um, as far as with me, man, how did, I, how did I get started with the podcasting or how did I get started with the ventures? Oh, well, just a little bit of both, um, I guess. Both? Yeah, a little bit of both, yeah. Okay, um, well, like you said, I had a podcast called Kevin Hates Hip Hop. Um, I've been running it since March of 2014. So it'll be over six six and a half years um, coming up. So I've basically always wanted to have a podcast. Um, the first time I heard of podcasting was like 2005. And I used to listen to this one podcast when I was in college back then called The College Life. And um, first podcast I ever heard. And these dudes was in college, a bunch of, you know, two white dudes in college. And I'm like, damn, bro, how the fuck do I do this? You know what I mean? Can I cuss on here? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. He's making sure. He's yeah, making man. Sure. Nah, yeah. I've been on certain podcasts where they like, no, nah, no, nah, no cussing. All right, cool. Um, but... Initially, I wanted a podcast in 2005, but it wasn't as easy as it is now. Like, now it's like, you know, we don't, we don't anchor right now, you know what I mean? And, you know, okay. cats, uh, you can literally pick up your iPhone, your Android, whatever you got, and just start recording from your phone. Right. And that's initially how I started um, recording on uh, SoundCloud in, like, 2009. So I had downloaded SoundCloud app on my iPhone, and uh, I'd be leaving my girlfriend's house on the weekend on like a Monday and I, I would have like a 20 minute drive. So I would, I coined it, I call it the morning mouthpiece. And this is on SoundCloud. None of that shit is up there no more. You know what I mean? It just, it morphed into something else now. Right. Um, and I would just be chopping game. This is when I still worked in rap. You know what I mean? So this is like 2009. I'm about 30. I mean, I'm like 20, four or five at this age, 24, mm -hmm. 25, 25. And I'll just be chopping game. And then it kind of morphed into me doing vlogging. I vlogged on Vimeo. Now, all those videos are still up there. You know what I mean? So I was working in rap, and I would just talk about certain shit I dealt with. You know what I mean? And um, eventually from there, I started doing Kevin Hey Tip Hop with a friend of mine. Um, a friend of mine put me on. He was like, bro, we should do a podcast. Now, mind you, this is like 2000. The fall of 2013, right? So he has a network called the Wild Jones Network. Shout out to my man, Jamie Jones. He's actually going to put me on in this game. I didn't really know how to get into it. I always wanted to, but I didn't know how to get my shit on iTunes, get my shit on, you know what I mean? Um, and from there, we, me and him did a couple of episodes, and then I branched off on my own in March of 2014. And from there, I've been putting out episodes. I'm on episode I think, 280 now. You know what I mean? So initially, when I first started, I was coming of age. Uh, it was basically a coming of age podcast. It was just something like an audio diary. I didn't necessarily put it out to help anybody but myself initially. And then people started reaching out like, oh, man, that episode helped me do this, this, and this. So it kind of morphed in for me, like, taking topics. My podcast is evergreen. I got episodes for everybody. Like, you could be a white supremacist and you might want to learn how to start a business. You know what I mean? You're going to listen to it from a black dude. You know what I'm saying? Or, mm -hmm. you know, you could be any religion, any creed, any, any of that shit. But 
if you want the raw, honest, honest, uh, uncut truth, you listen to my shit. You know what I mean? Um, but you know, like I said, I had topics on business, um, dating, um, pulling, getting money out the mud. You know, us as young black people, specific, uh, especially, we can't go to a bank and get a ten thousand dollar loan. It's a lot harder for us to get a business loan. As, as you know, when they see black people walk in the building. Right. But I was taught, you know, just from me when I was younger, a retired street nigga. So I was taught how to turn a hundred dollars into a thousand dollars and then graduated from that street shit and just parlayed into some legal shit with my first business, which was Uncovered Third PR. Um, I put that together in October, 2008, when I was 23. So my whole PR publicity firm was I was taking independent rappers and putting them in mainstream press. You know what I mean? So I worked with a lot of different cats. I ain't gonna name no names. If you look that shit up, you'd be like, damn, I didn't work with a lot of different cats. That's an old life of mine. I don't really talk about it a whole lot. But um, I just took the street hustle and made it legal. You know what I'm saying? And I, uh, I dissolved that business in like 2016. And then I got into um, doing Shopify. So I've always had some kind of little foray in e-commerce, you know what I'm saying? We're selling stuff online. So, you know, eBay and all that type of stuff, you know what I'm saying? And um, Shopify had a couple of different Shopify stores. And then from there, you need to pause? You good? Yeah, man. Hold on for a second, bro. My bad, man. Hold on. Okay. It's cool. That's what come with having three kids. Shit, I mean, I had a dream that we were, I was recording an episode and I introduced the, the baby to the world through the podcast. That'd be funny. I'm not going to put our kid on IG though. Some people do have an IG account. Man, um, Keisha did that shit. Keisha's daughter has an IG. And it's annoying. Like she posts her daughter all day. It's like, dude. All right, man. I'm back, man. My bad, it's good. bro. It's good. Did you pause it or did you stop it? Oh, dang. I don't even think I paused it, bro. It's okay. You can just cut that part out. We're gonna keep going. Okay. All right. Yeah, you can just cut that out. That's that's nothing. You can just cut that out. Okay. So, let's see. Where was I? Um Shopify. So I always had some cool little four-way in e-commerce, right? So I've always sold stuff on eBay, right? Since 2004, 2005. Um, Shopify, I had two different stores on Shopify where I had, you know, I was flipping stuff. I had a print-on-demand store called hellamerch.com. Then I had a women's clothing store called the Pacific District. Um, I ended up working on those for a little bit and then ended up uh, closing both of those. And now I have my third store, which is hella gorgeous.com. So it's a, it's a beauty supply store. Um, so I have premium wigs, weaves, uh, mink eyelashes, detangler combs, all that type of stuff. Eventually I will have a, a private label hair butter and beard butter for men and women. You know what I mean? So um, my fiance makes a, a beard butter that I've been using for 10 years. Like people that have stayed at my place in LA, um, like friends of mine, all different textures of hair. You know what I'm saying? They've all been like, damn, that hair butter is the shit. So I'm like, man, we need to sell that. And we've been saying this shit for years. Like, we need to sell this shit. You know what I'm saying? So um, we're going to private label it through hellagorgeous.com. It's going to be a hair oil and a hair butter and a beard butter. So if a woman wants to use it, she can use it. Put it in her hair, all type of shit. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I got hellagorgeous.com. I just opened, literally just opened. So if you want to tap in with that, hellagorgeous.com. Uh, okay. Every order over $100 is free, free shipping. You dig what I'm saying? So I'll tap in with that. Um, back to school. I know a lot of people are going to be doing the Zoom school thing, but you still got to look pretty. You feel me? Get you, right. Let us get some shit for your girl. and get you a get you. I got gift cards on there too. So if you just want to buy something as a gift card, you can do that too. But that's one of the businesses. Um, Kevin Hates Hip Hop is a business. You know what I'm saying? I've had that shit six years. Pacific Home Buyers is um, my uh, wholesaling business, my real estate acquisitions business. So um, a couple of years ago, I took a course 
on real estate wholesaling. And basically what that is, is I help people that are going through really sticky situations, people that are um, in pre foreclosure, people that are about to lose their house. And we offer them a cash offer on their property. And uh, we end up getting them under contract and then we flip that contract to another investor and we get a referral fee for it. You know what I mean? So this is how white people come in the hood and gentrify our neighborhoods. You from Atlanta, so I know you know, just like me. You yeah, me? yeah. Oh, Your yeah. neighborhood now, probably all white now. It's Chad's and Becky's and all type of shit. You know what I'm saying? And we right. think, yep. oh, they just got hella money. Nah, they using private money, man. They using hard money and all of that type of shit. So um, I've been doing Pacific Home Buyers for a year and a half and uh, marketed in Louisville, Kentucky, um, the Bay Area. Um, uh, that's where I'm from too. So the Bay, LA, a mm-hmm. little bit of Detroit, a little bit of Philly. Um, and then that's one stream and then another stream and linked from there for my expertise and learning that. Um, I have the varsity class consulting, which is uh, where I consult all entrepreneurs. So it doesn't matter what type of business. And I specialize in people that don't have a huge budget. You don't have 10,000 just sitting there. You might only have a couple of thousand or a couple of hundred bucks. Um, shit, Mike is one of my, uh, one of my, one of my students, you know what I'm saying? I've been shit consulting Mike, what, three years, four years? Three yeah. Years? Yeah. About, about three or four years. Cause I remember when I found your podcast, mm-hmm. um, I was still in Atlanta at the time. So yeah, you still in LA. Yeah, son so, wasn't even born yet. Nah, actually, nah, he he wasn't. Nah, nah. nah. <laughs> you only you had your oldest daughter, and that was it. You didn't have. I don't think you had the other two. Nah, nah, I, nah, I didn't. Nah. So yeah, it, it's been a while, definitely. Yeah. So, um, but uh, yeah, but you know, I wanted to ask you about the uh, uh Pacific home buyers. Now, I I noticed you mentioned um you you're more, I guess, focused on like people who are about to be like being foreclosure, but do you also like say, for example, cause I know me and my wife have been talking cause the kids are getting big. Yeah. And I think a few years down the line, we probably looking at trying to upgrade the house cause yeah. they don't need more space. So right. do you also focus on um, like just buying other people's homes that, you know, not under foreclosure, I guess. So with, um, okay, so with the, with the real estate investing with Pacific home buyers, um, I, we've, we've reached out, we've gotten all different type of leads. So, so basically you could be somebody going through pre foreclosure. It could be a situation where, excuse me, a house is under, uh, probate, you know, you got somebody might've passed away and there wasn't a deed, um, it could be, you know, people just looking to get rid of their house really quick, you know, because there's, you know, there's, there's upsides to dealing with a realtor and there's upsides to dealing with an investor. Um, there's pros and cons of both. With dealing with a realtor, your house could be sitting on the market for months. You know what I mean? Um, with an investor, the biggest pro for a lot of people is you get paid in cash. When you deal with a realtor, you're going to be dealing with funding from a bank who's going to be a mortgage company and escrow can go, you know, you could find a buyer today and the house might not close till the end of September, uh, October. It could be two months. You know what I'm saying? And we're in August now. So, um, but with a cash buyer, say for instance, today is August 1st. You want to sell your house today to me, right? Cash. We put it in a contract today. I can close within two weeks, three weeks, Dang. you know, cash. So generally what we do is when it's a cash buy, we offer you cash. We offer to take care of the closing. So you don't, you know, closing is expensive. You know what I'm saying? Out here in California, closing on a property can be 10 grand, $10,000 for closing costs. Yeah. I know in Atlanta, it could be anywhere from three to four, sometimes five. So yeah, yeah. with an investor dealing with Pacific home buyers, anybody listening, you know, you're looking to just sell your house. You don't have to be in terrible standing. Um, you know, but the thing is when you do it for an investor, we buy properties at, uh, a certain percentage of the market value. When you sell it with a realtor, you're going to get retail. You're going to get, you know, 90 to a hundred percent of what you want, 80% of what you want for the market oh, value. Okay. Usually when you do it with somebody like me, we're going to want to get it. The only way we can really make money is if we buy it at a, a much, you know, steeper discount because we're giving you cash. That's the incentive. 
Right. So a lot of times people, if they're in a rush to sell their house or they're going through a divorce or whatever, it's all different types of scenarios. Um, they'd rather just go through an investor and we go through a title company and there's no realtor or we go through a real estate um, lawyer. And uh, the day that we close, say for instance, I get you on a contract today to buy your house for 150,000. Um, we get under contract. I pay all the closing. Pacific Home Buyers pays all the closing. We go to the table, the closing table. Um, and the day that we close is the day that you get your cash. You're getting a wire or a cashier's check from my title company stating that we bought your property. It's just that, it's just that easy. It's quick. Okay. You know? Dang. Okay. Dang, man. All right. Dang. That's yeah, that's, that's okay. I was just wondering about that. Um, but I guess like, what are some of the resources that help you along the way? As far as if, uh, getting into real estate wholesaling? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What helped me along the way? Yeah. Um, so there was a period between 2016 to uh, 20, about a year and a half period where I was um, trying to figure out, I had dissolved uh, Uncovered Third PR in 2016 and I was trying to figure out what I want to do next. Now, Kevin hates hip hop. The It's a play on words. I don't hate hip hop. I worked in rap for damn near 10 years. It was shit over 10 years. Um, I just didn't like a lot of people I was dealing with, you know, in the industry. You know what I'm saying? So, um, basically, I had a period about a year where I was just trying to figure it out. And I took a course on, uh, you need to break again? Home bars. I had about a year where I, I was trying to figure out, man, like the whole rap shit. I was like, man, I don't want to do this shit no more. Hip hop, Kevin hates hip hop was a play on words. I had a friend of mine at the time when I was working in rap. I didn't like working with a lot of cats I worked with. A lot of cats I worked with were super unprofessional. Um, it was just bullshit, man. Like, you know, it was, it was, it was crazy. So the friend at the time was like, oh, you hate hip hop. Kevin hates hip hop. And then that parlayed into the name of the podcast. Um, but I had a period from 2016 to about the early, late 2017 where I didn't know what the hell I was going to do. You know what I mean? I'm like, damn, what the fuck am I going to do next? Um, all I knew was rap for a long time, over 10 years. I started interning um, uh, as far as with working in music when I was 20 years old. So from 20 to, shit, how long is that? 20 to about 33, that's all I knew. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, so I, I, I seen a brother on, on Breakfast Club, forgot his name, man, um, out of Baltimore. And he was talking about wholesaling houses. He was talking about how you could flip a house, no cash, no credit. And I'm like, that shit sound like a scam, G. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it sound, <laughs> that shit sound fugazi, bro. You yeah. know? You're like, yeah, you could flip a house. You can make 10, 15. It's like, bro. But that's, you know. Yeah, I had, that was that was my scarcity mindset at the time. Yeah, that's like uh, when I like when I see them signs on the houses. Yeah, and it's like uh, that's what know. and that's what I do, bro. Like when you see when you ride, everybody listening. When you ride through the neighborhood and you at the light and you see we buy houses cash, that's not a scam, bro. That's real. That's real. Like people like me put up those bandit signs. And it's just another way you can sell your property without having to go through a realtor. Because when you get a realtor, um, shit, you're going to have to pay them three to 6% of what you make. You know what I mean? And if you, if you want to hold on to your money, you ain't got to do it. Like if I offer you 150000 right. or 250000 or a million dollars a day, that's what you're getting at the closing table. A realtor, you, you know, you might put your shit up for a million dollars and they finna walk away. You finna walk away with, Close. They going. You might have to split the closing costs between you and the buyer. Or you might have to pay that shit. That's another ten thousand out here in California. So that's nine nine ninety uh, nine hundred ninety thousand. And then you gonna have to give your seller, your uh, realtor, sixty grand. You know what I'm saying? Anywhere from thirty to sixty grand on close on uh, their fee. So now your shit. You know you done took seventy thousand out of your pocket that could have been in your pocket. You know what I mean? So when you deal with an investor. Yo, you getting all the money. Yeah. Offer you a million dollars. That's what you getting. Right. In two yeah. weeks, three weeks, tops. You know? Wow. So, 
but I, I took a course um, late. Uh, I think it was like October. It might have been August of 2018. And uh, I uh, just went from there. You know what I mean? So that's kind of how like I parlayed the Shopify thing too. I took a course on Shopify um, in 2016, August of 2016. And then I started, I started Pacific, uh, the Pacific District, the, the woman's clothing store. Then, and then I just kind of went from there. So, um, but yeah, I started Pacific Home Buyers in November of 2018. So, yeah. Okay. All right. So, um, yeah, like what, I mean, what is it that, that keeps you, um, I guess keeps you motivated? Cause I know for me, um, man, I, I could go <laughs> crazy. I'm gonna tell you something, bro. This is reality. But what keeps me motivated is thinking about when I had eviction notice on my door, eviction notice on my door, um, no food in my grocery, no food in my refrigerator. You feel me? When I started my PR firm, when I was 24, dog, I had a suspended license. I was still in the streets. Um, I had an eviction notice on my door. I lived in the same neighborhood as my grandmother. So I used to have to eat at my grandmother's house every day when I was 24. I used to walk to my grandmother's house every day, eat dinner. You feel me? For months. You know what I'm saying? So uh, when I say I started rock bottom, I did. You know what I'm saying? So that shit is scary. Like waking up every day thinking about that shit. And then, you know, I had a little period between rap, uh, you know, the whole rap shit and to me find the Pacific home box, shit got a little sticky. You know what I'm saying? Like when I was working in rap, I was balling. Like I was hood rich. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't like rich, I was hood rich. You know what I'm saying? So I got so accustomed to, you know, having that type of money, six figures and shit. And then when that shit was gone, I got scared, you know. So I think about that all the time. Like, I know what it is, man, to be on probation and 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 fucking you can't find a job and you feel me. And you know, I mean, I've been an entrepreneur my whole life, but that ain't to say I've never looked for jobs. I have had periods where I had to try to look for a job, they just wouldn't fucking with me. You know what I'm saying? I always look at it like this with the corporate world. You know, with my experience of working in publicity for ten years. Um, I easily could be a director at fucking CBS radio right now, a, a publicity easy with what I know, but would they hire me? No. Cause in the corporate world, you know, they'll hire a black woman, um, whether she's a ratchet or a square, they don't really, they're, right. not, they're not intimidated by y'all ladies at all. You know what I'm saying? But they see when it comes to the corporate world with someone like me, I walk in, I want to be in the C-suite. I had 10 years plus fucking, um, experience in PR and marketing and advertising and shit. Um, I don't want to be the motherfucking associate making 30,000 a year. I live in LA. 30,000 a year ain't going to do shit. That ain't nothing. Yeah, for real. Not right. So, um, you know, to be in a C-suite as a black man, you got to be buck broken. That's just dead ass serious. Like if you ain't fucking in there sashaying and shit or uh, on some Carlton Bank shit, they not going to fuck with you. You know? And that's reality. That, yeah, yeah, that's what. Yeah, that's what I was about to say, man. Yeah, definitely. You know, I, I mean, I experienced it, kind of seen, you know, seeing seeing a lot of that stuff firsthand uh, when I was working at uh, what was I working at, man? I was working at like a like cell phone company or something like that. Yeah, you know, yeah, but yeah, yeah, man. I mean, I feel you on that, man. But um, you know, that that's the truth. But uh, you can't be yourself is. Yeah, if you're, if you're a strong black man, you can't be yourself in the corporate world. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, you know, so. like I and I'm the type of nigga, man. I was talking to my best friend yesterday. My best friend, um, stockbroker. This nigga is super corporate, but he he ain't fucking buck broken and all that other shit. He and he just recently moved to the Bay Area. We went to college on the East Coast. Me and him both went to school in Maryland, um, and uh, that's where I met him. He's from New Jersey. And we was talking about how when he went to go get his interview, his last name was Blamo. This nigga is uh, half Liberian, you know what I'm saying? And and uh, his mom is Puerto Rican, so he's got his last name is Blamo. So when he went to the interview, they thought he was an Italian dude, you know what I'm saying? So his dark skinned nigga walk in there and they're like looking at him like, "You're Edward Blamo?" Like you know what I'm saying? 
And he was telling me this all the type of bullshit he deal with. And I'm like, bro, like, I know me. And you know the microaggressions these white people be having in the corporate world, G. Like, you know, he said yesterday how this white boy emailed him with the uh, um, hella, like, stern and shit. Like, do you know what you're doing? Do I have to explain it again? You know what I mean? Like, trying to yeah. son him and shit. Yeah. He said he had to sit down for 45 minutes and, like, really think about how he was going to be professional and reply back. And it, it came out the white boy didn't know what the fuck he was talking about. And the CEO replied back like, Chad, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. Ed, Ed's doing a good job. I can't deal with that shit. Nigga like me can't deal with it. Right, and they, and right. they know when they talk to me. I, I'm not going to, nigga, you ain't going to talk to me any kind of way. No, right. I'm not going to be unprofessional. No. Right, right, right. But you ain't going to, you know the type of niggas you can talk to like that. And I'm not that type of nigga, period. So yeah. I've had situations where shit was ill and I, I might have had to go look for a job. But God, don't put me, I haven't had a job since I was 20. You know what I'm saying? And that was only for a couple of weeks. And that's when I really first started hustling. Like, uh, I was, at the time, this is 2005. So I was selling, like, Lacoste polos out the trunk of my car. You know, niggas rocking Lacoste back then. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Rock oh, yeah. Lacoste polos yeah. and shit. Oh, yeah. You know, at the store, Lacoste back then was, like, $90 for one polo. Hell, yeah. You know what I mean? You had to be a rich nigga to get yeah. that. So... I was getting them wholesale for like 10 and I'm flipping in the street. I sell you two of them for 90. You know what I'm saying? I'm in the street flipping. And that little $300 I was making at uh, Office Depot every week, I'm like, bro, I make that in a day, hustling in the streets. Right. I, go to the, I go to the barbershop and I can make that. Like, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So yeah. I learned at a young age, like, fuck a job. You know what I'm saying? Right, so right, right. Even when shit got ill through my own hustles, I had to realize, like, ain't nobody going to give me no job, bro. Nobody, bro. And if they do, you're going to be the spook next to the door. They're going to want you to be the nigga next to the door. Right. Uh, chasing motherfuckers trying to steal out of Walmart and all that. And I'm not disparaging nobody if that's what you do, my nigga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You but, you know, you probably, I'm pretty sure if you're doing that and you, you got a hustler mindset, you feel degraded every day. Like, man, I should be fucking the store manager of this motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? With right. the retail knowledge I have. And it's the same thing. Like I tell cats all the time, a lot of people that listen to my podcast, um, I got a lot of cats that email me from, you know, behind the walls and shit, prison and shit. You know what I'm saying? And oh, okay. They tell me about how like, bro, like, you know what I'm saying? I used to sell dope. I, don't, I get out in like six months. I don't know what I'm going to do. It's like, bro, look, man, put some money on your books. Have somebody put money on your books. Take one of my courses. And I had like three, three cats do that. They took the varsity class consult. That's a varsity class one-on-one which is my course on showing you how to wholesale properties. You know what I'm right, saying? Right, 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 I right. had three of them tell me when they got out, they got their first property in two weeks of being out the, out the pen. 15,000, 12,000. Like this yeah. shit is reality. You know what I'm saying? And when you a black man with a record, and I can speak because I got a record. You know what I'm saying? You got to make a way out of no way. You feel me? They might give you a job, but it's not going to be enough for you to get by. The, the whole trap is to keep right. your ass uh, keep your ass, you make just enough money the way you might have to go hustle in the streets again so they can put your ass right back in the system. You did? Right. Yeah, yeah. Once, yeah. once you get that, once you get that report card, you get that F on your report card, or shit, even misdemeanors a lot of times. Yeah, yeah. E yeah even, even for niggas demeanor. that ain't got no record, a lot of y'all listeners who ain't got no yeah. record, you could have an NBA and be the most squarest nigga ever, bro, and you... Got all the knowledge to be the best engineer in the world. And I had one of my, my um, students earlier this year, it was his brother out of New York, uh, named Al. And this nigga had been working coding since 99. And he told me all the shit he got to deal with these white people. And I'm like, bro, they ain't going to put you in a position. You a strong, you, a, you 6'2", 230, big black dude with a beard. You don't buck break when they talk to you. You know what I'm saying? Right, they yeah. Put you in a position. I showed yeah. him how to do consulting. I mean, how to do a uh, wholesaling with properties. You know okay. what I'm saying? So, you know, you got to, like, anybody with a, like, I tell anybody, man, uh, record or no record, you got to know how to make money outside your job if you black. Because I don't yeah. give a fuck if you the VP or the CEO at a Fortune 500 company, which is basically, you just going to be a, it ain't too many real niggas with positions like that. But if you are, congratulations. But do not get too reliant on that check because they can get rid of your ass whenever the fuck they want. Period. And and that's what I you know I I always I always talk about uh I always talk about that with my wife all the time and uh, I'm like man you know they can 
they can get rid of get rid of you whenever you want you know no matter how good yeah you might be and at we, the job. And let's be real we the best motherfucking workers in there let's be for real especially for black women black women every black woman that work in the corporate world you do all the work for your white boss he don't do shit he ain't even he's not even qualified to have his position but nine times out of ten you do his work in 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 the other person's work you do want to work for three people and they not giving you no money oh we'll give you employee a month and all fuck all that you know what i'm saying if you want to be a, if you want to be in a c-suite in your life nine times out of ten these white people ain't gonna give it to you unless you on some bed winching shit unless you buck broken unless you in there sashaying kissing ass but if you real and you black first they not fucking with you so if you want to be a ceo you want to be a ceo of your own business or stock or I, I just got in the stock game you might not be an entrepreneur but you might want to invest you can get in the right. stock market that's yeah. something else that i do consulting for so tap in okay okay yeah all right yeah that's cool because i know i um i think like shit, recently i had been doing stocks for like a minute and i've been kind of moving some stuff around um but i got into robin hood and all that so yeah that's what i use yep so <clears throat> what yeah, um so. You still still investing um, actively, or you just you got a couple you look at every now and then? Um, I got a couple that I'm looking at. Um, <clears throat> I did Bank of America. Oh uh, yeah, That's Norwegian because that one was like, at like I think Bank twenty of America, bucks, like Not twenty something. Ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's just a few other like kind of like independent ones that I've been kind of looking at too. So, but I'm not yeah. like as active as I was. Yeah, see, I um, I just got into that shit in March when, once the COVID shit kicked off. I had did research years ago on um, the, the mainstream media puts a lot of uh, a lot of shine on how poor people were during the Great Depression. But there were more millionaires made during the Great Depression than any other time. You know what I'm saying? So I just did my research on the Great Depression because I know what's going to happen again. And um, I invested in travel and casinos and all that eventually. But now we have, you know, COVID. So I invest in a lot of biotech companies that were working on the vaccine. Um, anybody listening, look at, I'll give, you, I'll give you two or three tickers just for free. Look into iBio. Okay. That's one you could look into. Um, all right. A lot of kids ain't going, I'll give you one more just on some free shit. It's just, you know. A lot of kids ain't going back to school. It's going to be a lot of kids sitting at home. Look at Box L, B O X L. That's uh, they work. They do all cloud education shit. You know what I mean? So all the kids are going to be at home. They do communication. Uh, they're going to be Box is a company, a software company that works with uh, universities and public schools. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's that's a lot of good information, man. For dropping, you know, dropping some some jewels on people, man. Because uh, definitely, man, I, I see like, like I I know for myself, man, it's something that I'm trying. I'm trying to definitely get up out of that whole corporate, whatever. You know what I'm saying? So that's something that I've been working on myself, man. <laughs> like I said, just with this podcast and everything that I'm. That's what I've you know been focusing on. But you know, I think that everybody should at least have some kind of side hustle. Oh man, uh, you know what I mean? World, man, look, this ain't like it was for uh, grandma and grandpa, nigga, where, or even our mom and our dad, you know what I'm saying? Who they could work in the same place for 30 fucking years, buy a house by 30 with regular jobs. I'm not talking about with, oh, I had to get a college degree and none of that shit. Nah, that shit's a wrap, G. You know what I'm saying? For our people in our generation, the longest most people will be at a job is four to three to four years, period. You know what I'm saying? So niggas is moving around and you need, I don't give a fuck if you make a quarter million dollars a year. Do not get reliant on that corporate check. Do not. For you niggas in the NFL, NBA, I know a lot of y'all listening because you listen to my podcast and you're going to be listening to this shit too. A lot of you young cats, you ain't never, ever, ever seen a million dollars, ever. Now you got 20 million sitting in your bank account. The average NFL player only gets three seasons. Three. It ain't that many Odell Beckhams it ain't going to be that many uh, Antonio Browns. This nigga played in the league 11 years. They don't even want him to come back. Right, you know what I'm right. saying? <laughs> so if you got a bag, 
even if somebody die in your family and you end up getting 50, 60 racks, invest your shit, man. I'm telling you, invest your shit. You know, even if somebody pass, you get a, or you come up on a bag, a settlement of job for 10 to 15, bro, invest that invest shit. It. Real estate, crypto, uh, Shopify, whatever. It's a lot of different businesses you can start. You know what I mean? My little brother, perfect example. My little brother, Jalen, uh, him and my mom, they live up in Sacramento and shit. So my brother is a hell of a cook, 19 years old, can cook his ass off. Y'all tap in on IG, Jay's, J-A-Y-S, Jay's Kitchen 916 um, up in Sacramento. And uh, just two weeks ago, he started doing, selling food on there. This nigga made $1,500 in his first three days. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so and that's just me through me showing them, and coaching them on how to make money. So anybody, you got an idea where you want to make some money, tap in with me. You might have a nine to five job, but you make incredible cakes, cupcakes and shit. Take the weekend, get you a pre-order during the week. You know, take pictures of what you got. This week we're doing sweet potato pies. Sell the motherfuckers for 15 bucks. Throw the motherfuckers up on there. Take a Take a uh, pre-order on IG or Facebook, whatever you use, Twitter, whatever. Everybody use something. You listen to this podcast, use some kind of social media. Everybody got something. My mom got social media. My mom got IG. You know what I'm saying? So take a pre-order. That's extra money in your pocket. You know what I'm saying? Even if it's even if only five people hit you or 10 people hit you, 10 people hit you for $15, that's 150 bucks in your pocket. Man. You know? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, that's definitely really something sure. to think if about. If you're good yeah. at something, sell it. Because that's where we're at. That's right. where we're at. We're in a digital fucking age, man. There's a reason why we have, you have YouTube and you have podcasts like this and podcasts like mine. We show you how to make fucking money. The thing is, and I say this shit all the time, this device right here in my hand, the iPhone, the Android, your smartphone, don't be a don't be a dummy with a smartphone. I did an episode on that. Right. Yeah, yeah I remember that. Though. Yeah. Dummies with smartphones. I did that shit six, five years ago. I don't know how long. Look, you can either use your phone as a place a free education. You ain't gotta go to college no more, man. I would tell anybody if you don't feel like going, you don't don't just go to college and not know what degree you want to do. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like real right. shit. I, I would say I enjoyed the experience of meeting friends and shit, but um, if you don't want to go to college and you want to learn how to be a, you want to learn how to sell shampoo and shit on Amazon, you go to YouTube. You know what I'm saying? Um, you might be in a hell of a tattoo artist. You know what I mean? You want to learn how to market. YouTube. Right. If you're not using your smartphone as an ATM, yeah, learning shit. And the ATM don't mean you're making money right now. It could be I'm acquiring the knowledge I need to now to start a business or start a service or create a product, an entity, intellectual property, intellectual property, an app, whatever it needs to be so that I can turn my phone into an ATM. You know what I'm saying? So if you're not using this as an ATM, but you're using it to uh, send your friends dumbass memes about Will Smith and Jada, who gives a fuck? If you're a grown yeah. ass man, you shouldn't give a shit. You need to be making money. You know what I'm saying? I love slapstick comedy like the next person, but too many people use this device as a television device. Entertainment, it's, yeah. It's it's. I love entertainment too. Don't get me wrong. I watch football yeah. and I, I like <laughs> wrestling and boxing and all that shit too. Right. Like anybody else? But eighty percent of the time when I'm on my phone, I'm listening to a podcast. If I'm scrolling through my IG, there's a way you can set up your IG to where. Just unfollow all the people from your neighborhood that ain't doing shit. They talking all that negative bullshit. Everybody from the hood got motherfuckers in their family like that or people on your Facebook. Right, right. Yep. Unfollow, put them niggas on mute. You ain't got to unfollow them. Put them on mute. I don't want to see this shit. You know what? I, I'm trying, I need positive shit. I need positive affirmations. Go follow right. a bunch of people that do that. And pretty soon your algorithm will be all positive shit. But black okay. people, especially with the social media, they're going to always, win, especially in this country, they want to show us in the most fucked up of ways. They want to show us getting lynched. They want you to see that shit. You feel me? Period. If you're black, I put it, you should do this. And I've done this with my white friend. If you got a white friend, do this, man. 
show y'all both got Twitter. Go to his, and if y'all both in the same, you in the same city, sit next to him. What does his training look like compared to yours? You know what I'm saying? It's going to be completely different, especially if you like the same shit. He might love the same rap artists as you. He might love the same types of women as you or the same type of ladies, the same type of guys as you. But her shit ain't going to look, your homegirl shit ain't going to look like yours, your white homegirl. They, they fucking use uh, social media now like they used to use daytime TV as a way to program your ass. So what I do is I took my social media. All I follow is uh, pro athletes I like, niggas, uh, the fitness guys are in really good shape that push me to want to get in better shape. I follow hella black entrepreneurs. My shit is black as fuck. And that ain't just because it became cool in the last two years. I've been pro-black my whole fucking life. You know what I'm saying? I read the ISIS papers when I was 12 years old. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you gotta, you just gotta find a way to use social media to enrich you. You know what I mean? Look, higher your vibration. And currency, high currency is a vibration, a high vibration. You want everything to be high vibration. And I don't have time for low vibrational bullshit. A lot of people are cool with that. You you might have a nine to five you hate, but you waste, you talk about how it don't pay you enough, but you waste time looking at bullshit, uh, celebrity worship shit. All you niggas over 30 and you you and wrap your life around Jada Pinkett and August Alcina. And, and, and any of these other motherfucking celebrities, you care more about them than you do anything else in your life. You need to reevaluate some shit, man. Real talk. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. That's that's man. Yeah. That's that's like I said, man. That's what I've been thinking too, man. I just I don't know, man. Some some people I just stopped talking to. You know, trying to. Man. You know what I'm saying? You, you know, know what how I mean? you know how you when you were younger, you like because you grew up you grew up in the hood like me, bro. So we we positive, man. You you got you a family. You moved out of town. You got your wife and your kids, and you trying to do positive shit, man. And your podcast is positive. You all talk about high vibrations and all that shit, and that's important, especially for for black men. Our mental health is we don't talk about it enough. Our shit is fucked up, bro. You know what I'm saying? So the fact that we have a podcast yeah. like yours, where man, I be gaining a whole lot of clarity from a lot of your shit because you be talking about some real positive shit. Okay, I mean, yeah. I have a fucked up day and listen to your podcast and be like, okay, cool. Niggas need that, bro. Yeah, yeah. Real shit. It's too many podcasts about like bullshit. Lots of bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. And, and, and I expect that, and this is not to degrade women at all. I expect the whole gossipy thing from women because generally most women love, you know, they love gossipy shit. Not all. Hey, don't, uh, uh, Alphabet Gang, don't come at me with that shit. But, um, a lot of women like the gossipy shit. Nah, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you are fucking 30 years old, nigga, and your whole podcast or your whole socialite on Instagram shit is about shitting on other niggas, they get a bag that's corny. It's too many of y'all. Right, right. Y'all. Yeah. Like my yeah. nigga Jane Dash say, Chatty Patty. That shit's corny, bro. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, because I, I know, like, me and my wife, we had, we had uh, a podcast, man. And I, I think we just so, you know, like, just totally out. Op- <laughs> man, yeah. You let him come say hello, man. Huh? You should you should have him on your next podcast, your son on your next podcast, bro. <laughs> he would uh, like that shit. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do that, but uh yeah. you know what? At the end of every episode, you should have him you'll get let him do the intro. This okay. is my daddy's podcast. Woo woo woo. Yeah. Get like that, bro. Okay. That'll get him off your back for a little bit. Yeah, man. Yeah, the old is supposed to be watching them, you know what I'm saying? And they just she on Snapchat. <laughs> she just man, letting them run all over her, man. So, but yeah, um, but yeah, so yeah. I mean, we had a podcast, but I, I mean, we just stopped doing it because I felt it wasn't really, you know, authentic to what I was doing. You know what I'm saying? We just so opposite. It just didn't work. But uh, mm. you know, but uh, man, I guess I'm gonna have to wrap this up, man, because they done invaded my space and everything. <laughs> but uh, hey, boy, what are you doing? What's up, man? Hi. What's good? He's a big four-year-old, bro. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, y'all go chill out. Y'all done say hi, okay? Y'all good now? Yeah. Dang, man. <laughs> That's good. You got kids, man. That's all good. Why, why you press the button? Stop pressing the buttons. 
Nah, nah, don't press that. All right, y'all, y'all go somewhere now, okay? Go, please, because I gotta wrap this up. I'll be done in like, give me like three minutes, please. All right, <laughs> all right. So, uh, any, uh, I guess, any last words for your, uh, for any, everybody out there that you wanna, uh, I don't know, you wanna plug your Instagram, Twitter. We gotta do a part two. We gotta do a part two. Yeah. <laughs> if you wanna do one with the kids are asleep, bro, let me know. I don't know what time your kids go to sleep, but if you wanna do one in like, okay, like an evening one, we could do that. Okay, yeah, man, my bad, bro. Nah, it's just... cool, bro. Look, man, I, bro, I got I got nieces and nephews and shit. I know how it is, bro. I'm not tripping. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, man. So yeah. I, I, yeah. Shit, bro. Yo, you still there, man? Oh, there we go. Nah, I, I get it. Like I said, we'll knock it out. So, um, basically, okay, if you want to tap in with the podcast. I would appreciate it. Um, KevinHateTipHop.com. I am everywhere. iTunes, Spreaker, uh, Google Play, Spotify, or whatever you use. You know, wherever you listen to your podcast. Um, what you can expect from it is no different than what this podcast was today. So what you heard today, that's what you can expect from my podcast. Um, so if you ain't about empowering yourself, you listening to the wrong. You listen to the wrong Mike. Exp- you shouldn't be listening to Mike shit. You shouldn't be listening to my shit. If you want the gossipy shit, they got hell of those. Them niggas don't last though. But if you want the real gems, you fuck with Mike shit and you fuck with my shit. Um, if you want to learn how to start a business, reach out to me, Kevin hates hip hop at gmail.com. Um, and it doesn't matter. I've had clients who have had Shopify stores. I've had clients that wanted to start um, fitness uh, apparel lines. I've had clients who wanted to learn how to use Amazon FBA, fulfillment by Amazon. I've had clients who wanted to create a supplement, private label, uh, fitness supplements. I've had clients who started juice bars in Atlanta. Uh, okay. I've had all different types of clients. Or if you want to learn the one-on-one coaching on how to wholesale, um, I sell that by... Uh, so if you want general business, I do that by the hour. Um, but if you want to do, uh, you want to learn how to wholesale properties one-on-one rather than my course I have, I do that by, uh, two hour blocks. So generally after about two hours, you will know all the basics on how to wholesale properties within two hours. Um, that's a different thing, but it's through the varsity class consulting. Just hit me up, Kevin hates at gmail.com. And as far as the course, the varsity class one-on-one, um, you want to learn how to wholesale properties varsityclass.com you know what i mean tap in with that um it's an asset you know it's an asset and the last thing i want to plug is hella gorgeous so you know ladies if you're looking to get premium wigs uh remy whatever man remy wigs brazilian um mink eyelashes or maybe you, you're natural and you just want to get some good products for your hair go to hella gorgeous.com and follow me on instagram at kevin hates hip hop and uh, you know, I'll follow you back. Tap in. All right, so there you have it, man. Uh, Kevin Robinson, Kevin hates hip hop. You know, go follow him. Check out the show. It is definitely. I mean, I can speak from personal experience. You know, he's got a lot of good stuff going on over there. So uh, yeah, just check it out. Like I said, and um, as always, you know. Uh, thank you for coming on the show, man. You know, this is like been my first interview, man. So I was kind of a little nervous about it. I was like, ah, you ain't got no reason to be nervous. <laughs> every interview, your questions were on point. You allowed me to speak. Sometimes uh, an interviewer will get really excited, want to overspeak the person they're talking to. You didn't do that at all. But then again, me and you have uh, chemistry already because we've talked for years. You know, right, what I mean? right. We know each other's patterns. You know what I'm saying? Um, but no, you did a great job, bro. You did a good job. Your questions were good. Um, I would just say like, man, just keep bringing people on that, uh, elaborate. You gotta have people that like to tell stories. You know what I mean? Don't bring no, I tried to bring people on podcasts and they just give me one word. And so, Hey man, when you started, um, you know, tell us about when you started, you know, the bourbon company. Oh man, I started 2015. And that's it. Right. (laughs) Like, come on, man. Like, you know, I had people that I had to just tell them straight up, like, gee, I'm not putting this out, bro. Like, 
I, I can't I can't do this. You know what I mean? So yeah, but um no, I appreciate you for having me on, bro. Definitely. All right. So uh yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, I'm gonna um reach out to you, man, to get a part two, man, when these kids sleep, man. I, <laughs> man, I don't know, man. I don't know what I was thinking, man. Maybe but you know what you could do? You huh? could take off the like the last uh five minutes of us doing the outro. You could take that off and you could just keep this, save this, and then we can come back and restart the whole you know, okay. where we started off at. Okay. I know me and you, we only did, what, 30 minutes? Yeah, like 30 minutes. That's it. Yeah, 30 minutes. So, yeah, man. But I, I definitely, man, I, like, I, I'm going to have to do this, like, maybe when the wife come home so she can better. Yeah, that's probably the best. <laughs> let, let, her, let her let them. <laughs> it's cool, though. I ain't, bro, you know I ain't tripping. Uh, yeah, yeah. All right, man. But, yeah, um, so, um, as always, for everybody out there, uh, like I always say, take care of yourselves and take care of each other.